Hello and welcome to episode four in this beginner's guide to Pramix Discovery series. Now, my name is Malcolm Calvert. I'm the director of Pramix Microsimulation, speaking to you from Edinburgh in Scotland. And it's been very enjoyable to share with you some of the basics of Pramix Discovery so far. And we're gonna be going further with that in episode four today. Now, if you haven't seen episodes one to three, I would recommend that you go and watch those. You can find those on our YouTube channel and then come back to episode four because we're very much building from where we left off last time. So I've opened up the model that we were working on in episode three, and we're gonna continue with this model today. Now let's briefly recap on what we've done so far. So we created a new model. We loaded in an overlay uh, on which to build our network. And then we started to add nodes and links to construct the network. So if I turn the overlay off using the hotkey O and I'll turn my nodes on using the hotkey N, we can see the node and link structure of the model. Now we also changed some of the properties of the links for example, we changed the category of the links to the northeast section of the model, and you can see they're colored in yellow, which is representing a different category. We also added in extra lanes on certain links in the middle of the model here. We made some curved links up here, and we added in some wide ends and wide starts, which you can see with the hatching on the network there. So now that we've got our node and link structure for this model, we're going to look in this episode at how we code junctions. Now there's three junctions in the model, as you can see. This one is a priority junction. Uh, this one is a signal control junction. and uh, This one is going to be a roundabout. So let's look first of all at the priority junction. And um, we will zoom in uh, to that location in the model. And I will turn on my overlay again with the hotkey O. Now, at a priority junction, what we mean by that is that the vehicles will be navigating that junction based on the give way rules of the road. So that means that certain movements through this junction won't be giving way to any traffic, whereas other movements will. And we'll come on to look at that more closely. Now, the priorities are defined by the arrowheads on the movements which you can see on the different approaches to the junction and there's three priorities on display here the first is known as a major priority and that's this type of arrowhead where it's filled in completely with the solid color the second type of priority is a medium and that is this type of arrowhead where you've got the line around each edge of the arrow and then the third is a minor priority. And that's where you've got this type of arrowhead with the V on it. So what do these arrowheads mean? Well, the major one means that the traffic using this movement won't give way to anything else. They've got major priority, and so they will just continue on their journey. The medium arrowhead means that vehicles making this movement, so turning right at this junction, will be giving way to one stream of traffic. So in this case, they're giving way to this stream of traffic over here. Then the minor priority, which is this arrowhead, means that vehicles making this movement will give way to more than one stream of traffic. So we've learned what the priorities are, but how do we edit them? And it's very easy to do that. You simply click on the arrowheads which are on display. So if I click on this arrowhead, it brings up a range of different options which I can use for the priority. Now there's three here that we've already identified. There's the major priority, which is currently being used. There's the medium. And if I click on that, you can see the arrowhead on the network changing. There's the minor. And again, the network on the arrowhead changes. Now the other options relate to barring movements and also choosing the number of lanes being used. And we'll come on to use those in later examples. So for now, we'll just focus on these three, the minor, the medium, and the major, which is the correct movement in this case. 
Now, if I click back in the workspace and have a look at the different arrowheads, I can actually see that all the different movements that have been uh, assigned at this junction are all correct. And that's because automatically Pramix Discovery has worked out based on the geometry of this junction that it's very likely to be a T-junction. And that means that the main movement is this one and the side arm is coming uh, from the southeast. And so we've got the major movements in the correct place, we've got the medium movements correct and the minor movement as well. So it's already sorted those priorities out for us correctly. So we've set the priorities of the junction correctly and it's now time to turn attention to the geometry of the junction and make sure that the coding on the network properly reflects the geometry of the overlay and therefore of the real world. Now, so far what we've done is we've placed a node at this junction and we've got several links coming out from that node. But we really need to use other tools to refine that. And the primary tool for that is called Curbs. Now, Curbs can be switched on and off using this toolbar button at the top of the screen here. Um, so I'll click on that and that will turn my Curbs on. I can also use the hotkey K. Uh, so K turns that on and off. Now you can see that these curb points are drawn at the starts and ends of each link um, on either edge of the link. So every link will have four curbs essentially. Now when we click on a curb and drag it we can move it around just like we would move a node as we have done previously. So all of these curbs can move and you can see as I move them that they move the, uh, the road outline and the tarmac on the road as well. Okay, now to help us to position the curbs correctly it can be useful to, to switch the tarmac off so we're just seeing a line diagram and I can do that in my styles panel if I go to tarmac which is underneath links here and switch that off. This now gives me uh, just the line drawing and helps me to position my curbs a little bit better. Now it's always straight lines that are drawn between curbs, so when I've got a curve like this, I won't be able to correct that exactly, but this is, is good enough. So what I'm just going to do is stretch my curbs to uh, match up my overlay, like so. Okay. So we're now seeing a much better match between the network that I've coded and the overlay underneath it. And if I turn the tarmac back on, uh, I can see that reflected on the whole uh, road. So the curves are useful to match the geometry of my coded network with the overlay. But I also need to think about how vehicles are going to move through this junction. And the thing that really influences the way that vehicles move through the network is something called lane points. And I can turn my lane points on using a toolbar button beside the curbs, which is here. And you can see the lane points appear. Now the lane points are found at the starts and the ends of links, just like curbs. Now to see more clearly the paths that vehicles will take through the network, I can turn on something called trajectories and I'll do that using the hotkey T. So I turn on the trajectories and it shows me these blue lines which are joining up the lane points and showing me the paths that vehicles will take. Now to understand the close relationship between lane points and trajectories I can simply click on a lane point and move it and you can see the trajectory lines move. So what we want to do at this junction is move the lane points to subsequently move the trajectories to represent the swept paths or the paths that vehicles will take as they go through this junction. To position my lane points as accurately as possible, I'm going to switch the tarmac off again by opening up my styles panel and clicking on tarmac. And that reveals the underlying overlay now most of the lane points are in reasonably good positions. The key one that we want to change is this one here. 
And that's because lane points not only represent the paths vehicles will take, but also where they will stop when they need to give way. And we know that on the sidearm here, that vehicles will be giving way at this point. So what I want to do is click on my lane point and move it uh, up to the junction like so. Now what you can see when I move the lane point is that it changes colour and becomes blue. In a similar way to the curves have become blue because I've moved all of those. So you can tell which lane points and which curves have been moved by their colour. And if you ever need to reset a lane point or a curb, you can simply select it, right click and go to reset lane point and it will move back to its default position. Okay, so that's all we're going to cover in episode four today. And we focused in on one particular junction, a priority junction. We've looked at the different priorities, major, medium and minor, and how to apply those. We've also looked at how we can use curbs and lane points to better reflect the geometry of the junction and the movements of the vehicles respectively. And as we go on to look at signal control junctions and roundabouts in the next couple of episodes, we'll be coming back to curbs and lane points and realizing how important they are throughout our network. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.